Johanna, Johanna Uckermann is chairwoman of the Social Democrats' youth organization, but hopes to trade that post for a seat on the party executive. We'll be talking about rebellion and politics. Welcome to the DW interview. <laughs> Frau Uckermann, your parents are SPD members. Your father was a local politician in Lower Bavaria. Many kids would say, no way I'm doing the same thing my parents did. But you are. Why? As you correctly noted, I come from a very political family. And of course, politics was always a topic at home. We used to discuss it at the kitchen table. I used to go to events. But I come from Bavaria, from the Bavarian forest, where social democrats tend to be in the minority. So the rebellion wasn't against my parents, but more against the mainstream and the Christian social union, which is very dominant here. And politically, I think the subject of justice preoccupied me at a very early age. My parents are not only SPD members, they're also both teachers. So they were really after me to do well in school and get the grades. I had very much the classic school career, in high school and university, with no major hurdles in my way. Of course, I realized very quickly that there were others who did have hurdles, and it wasn't so easy for them. So the rebellion against your parents ended, but you're not obsessed with harmony, are you? No, I'm not at all obsessed with harmony. I'll argue when it's really important to me, and when I feel like something has to be said. I don't argue just because it looks good or it's expected, but when the matter is really important to me. And now you intend to stir up the Social Democrats. What's the main reason why you want to be elected to the party executive? I think it's extremely important to bring young people and their experience and viewpoints into the party. That's to say, experience from their studies and training and starting professional life. You don't find that often within the SPD, but it's important, especially for a major party, to include these viewpoints. So I very much hope to be elected and given this trust. You've just experienced firsthand the way the SPD handles its younger members. When your place on the ballot in Bavaria for the national elections would have been assured, they gave you the brush off. Does that still hurt? Yes, that was a bitter experience for me, and one that, in the end, won't cast the SPD in a good light. The party is on average very old, and often very male. You can tell that by the parliamentary group, where very few members are under 30, or even 35. And I think, in the long run, that'll be a problem. Where it's about including young people's views and getting in touch, you'll find many of the young people you talk to feel that politics have nothing whatsoever to do with them. But if they see someone who is younger talking about their experiences, that will have a very different impact. That appeals to young people. I think that would be a way ahead for the SPD. Could the reason it didn't work out with the ballot in Bavaria be that you obviously like to attack the SPD's political approach? You once publicly gave the former party chairman, Zygmar Gabriel, a grade of D-. I'm sure that didn't help relations between the youth organization and the SPD. Of course, the party chairman's the one you take your frustrations out on. We were in the Grand Coalition. We had just voted for the Data Retention Act and tightening the right to asylum. And we had to swallow lots of bitter pills from the Christian Democrats, and especially from their Bavarian sister party. And we in the youth organization were not happy. Rather than going behind everyone's backs, it's better to say something straight out. That's how I've always done it. Referring to this disagreement, the ex-parliamentary group chairman Thomas Oppermann called you consistently lacking in solidarity. 
And it gets worse, almost going below the belt. The spokesman for the party's conservative faction tweeted, and I quote, Our crackpot Ukerman only causes trouble. Are your worst enemies your own party comrades? I'd have to say, if that's what Johannes Kars labels me, I see it more as an honor, because we have absolutely nothing in common politically. I stand for completely different convictions, but in recent months, I've got a very different impression. We young Social Democrats ran an incredibly strong election campaign. We were the backbone of the federal level campaign, we gained thousands of new members, and we've accomplished a lot politically within the SPD, which is important to young people. And that made them realize what their youth organization should actually mean to them. Martin Schulz, for instance, supported my bid for the executive. At the National Youth Organization Convention in Saarbrücken, Lars Klingbeil also emphasized this point. It may not be a red carpet, but you could see they would all welcome it if it works out with my bid. You said the youth organization was the SPD's backbone. They hope to form a bullock against a grand coalition, but many in the party don't like the idea. They're marching toward the grand coalition. Is that also how you see it? Right now, we're in a tricky situation. Now that Angela Merkel has failed to form the three-way coalition and the Free Democrats Christian Lindner quit the talks, the situation is pretty difficult. And of course, the SPD is available for discussions with the various actors and the constitutional institutions, as the German president suggested. But we in the youth organization take a very clear position. And in my personal opinion, a new edition of the Grand Coalition isn't the right way to go. Why? In that last edition, you achieved almost all your election promises, minimum wage, women's quota, retirement at 63 and so on. It was a great project. Yes, but all the points we had in common have been used up. I just don't see any more projects in common. Another problem I see is that the Grand Coalition has actually been voted out. We lost 14% of our voters. That's really not a new mandate. Can you explain why that happened and the SPD ended up with 20.5% even though they had accomplished so much? I think the Grand Coalition is partly responsible because the two major parties never debated policy direction. No real differences were apparent. The German people were never clear where the SPD wanted to go and where the Christian Democrats wanted to go. We were seen as two parties that do everything together. That's been especially noticeable the past few weeks. The Free Democrats and the Greens toured the country saying, every vote for the SPD is a vote for the Grand Coalition. The same five people are now saying the SPD has to agree to a Grand Coalition, but I see that as a problem. But if the Grand Coalition is the problem, what's the solution? A minority government would mean no SPD ministers, not to mention female ministers. And Frau Merkel would get all the laurels. I think you have to get a little creative. As I said, the Grand Coalition is a problem because we have no points left in common, because there's no debate over policy direction, also because the far-right AFD would lead the opposition in Parliament. I think the SPD has a responsibility not to allow that, and Frau Merkel has a responsibility to be more creative. I could imagine a minority government. That would mean a great improvement, at least for Parliament. Then we'd know what the individual parties stand for. We could debate the right solutions. It would do our democracy good. But you, the SPD, also have a responsibility. The SPD is still led by the people who turned in these bad results from this bad campaign. What has to change? Who has to go? <laughs> Who has to go is the wrong question. It's what has to change, especially what do we have to change about our platform. The personnel should stay. For now, yes. And Martin Schulz? There'll be some changes at the National Party Convention. In general, the party executive will become younger, more feminine. 
The Executive Committee will too. I support that, but I think it's far too short-sighted to reduce everything to a question of personnel. The real problem is that we have to revise the SPD's platform. We have to have a sharper profile. But we also have to deal with issues coming up in the future. What does digitization mean to our workaday world? How will life be in a society of migrants? What about global justice? People expect answers to these questions, and they expect some orientation, which the SPD isn't giving them right now. But you yourself said it has to become younger and more feminine, so it is a question of personnel. Are you confident the National Convention won't go the same way as in Bavaria, and Johanna Uckermann comes up empty-handed again? At the moment, I'm very confident. I think the party has learned that it just makes sense to include young people, especially strong young women. So I'm very confident. And anyway, it's not just about me. One or the other party member might see it differently, but I really believe we've got to make the party ranks younger and more feminine, starting from the local chapters up through the state executive committees, right up to the party leadership. We need young people everywhere, with new ideas and fresh stimuli. Frau Uckermann, now we've come to our unfinished sentences that I'd like to ask you to complete. I admire Angela Merkel for... <laughs> for not caving in, even though she failed so spectacularly these past few days. I appreciate Sigmar Gabriel for... Being a man of conviction and fighting passionately for his politics. In 20 years, I see myself hopefully able to make the world a little better. Johanna Uckermann, many thanks for our talk. Thank you.